Welcome to Lesson 9 of Bernina Software Creative Studio. Today's topic is mixed media. With the inclusion of CorelDRAW in our software, we have lots of opportunities to mix pictures with stitching. Let's investigate some of these combination possibilities and what we can do with photographs. Included with this lesson, you will receive a handout of the steps, the presentation handout, and the artwork necessary to create this project. If you want to gather your supplies, you're going to need three sheets of printed treasures or some other comparable product for fabric printed sheets. The fabric background for the oval pictures that you'll be creating is 9 inches by 25 inches. You're also going to need different sizes of fabric strips that coordinate with the project. Batting, backing, binding, embroidery thread, applique fuse and fix for the applique frames, stable stick tearaway as one of the stabilizers, and also medium weight tearaway. Some of the images came from the graphicsferry.com and they do have a membership where you can participate in tutorials and projects and print images. The images on this website were created before 1923, so they are public domain images. She also has e-courses that you can participate in. The images that came from the Graphic Fairy are the pictures that were we're going to place in the oval frames. I also got an image from morguefile.com and it is the image that you see in the upper right hand corner. This is a Lisa Leo photograph. And a couple of the images came from pixabay.com which also has royalty free images and we'll be using the sheet music as well as the lady in the guitar. Also included with the lesson is a font that was downloaded from defontdyke.com and this is going to be used for the musical staff that we will embroider on the project. Just as a reminder, the steps to install font, you want to download the font and then extract from the zipped file so you can right click on the zip file and select extract all. And then you will place that folder wherever you want to place it. You'll go to the folder, you'll right click and install for all users. And remember that you want the software closed when you do this. So that is one of the first things that you're going to do in the lesson. So let's look at the lesson. Remember before you open the software to install the font music elements. Then open the software and switch to Artwork Canvas. Select File, Import, and navigate to the location of the file Lady with Guitar. Click on Import and press Enter. Then select Edit Artwork, and this will open the file in Corel Photo Paint. Once Corel Photo Paint is open, go to Image Cutout Lab, and this opens a dialog box. Click on the highlighter. And you can change the nib size, you can change the color, you can also zoom into the picture. And you're going to trace around the edge of this image. Remember to release the mouse every so often, so if you have to use undo, it won't make you start all over. You have the scroll arrows to move down the image as you trace around the image. Once you're around the image, you want all edges around her to be colored in with the highlighter. You may also want to color in the area in between her knees, and that will allow the background image to show through. After you've completely enclosed the image, click on the Fill tool and fill the image with color, and then click on Preview. This opens the image on a transparent background, and now you will use two different tools. There's the Add Detail and there's Remove Detail. 
So if there's an area where I want to add detail around the image, I can click on it and then I can smooth out the edges. There may be areas where you will want to delete detail and I'll use the remove detail and you can adjust the nib size as necessary to remove detail. You can also use undo here. And the idea with these tools is that you're just perfecting the edges for the cutout. After you're done smoothing the edges, click on the drop down arrow next to none and select a black background because chances are this is going to show you some areas that you may want to go back over. And again, you have two tools to use. You have add detail and subtract detail. Now don't get too hung up on getting this perfect because remember this is going to go on top of another background. So the idea is just to get it as clean as you can around the edges, but don't get hung up making it perfect because a lot of these little areas will not show up in the final picture. Once you're finished, click OK. And notice that you have three different results. Um, what we want is the cutout, which is the default. So you can just click OK. When I click OK, it brings the image back into Corel Photo Paint with a transparent background. Next, select File, Exit. And yes, we want to save the changes. Uh, this will place the image in back in Artwork Canvas. Select File, Export, and I have created a file on my desktop called Mixed Media. I'm going to call this Lady with Guitar Cut. And I want to save this as a PNG, which will preserve the transparent background. I'll click on Export. A dialog box opens up, and you want to make sure that transparency is checked, and it is checked by default, and I will click OK. And now I'm going to delete that image for the time being, and we'll work with our second image. Once again, select Insert Artwork. And we're going to use the rock this time. Click on Import and press Enter. Now, with nothing selected, I can change the paper size. And I want the paper size to be 8.5 by 11 because this is the size of the printed treasures. And I want to have this as a guideline. But I want to crop this image. I want to take some of the width off. So I'm going to select the Crop tool and then crop the image. And before I double click to set it, I want to change it to a specific size. So I can change it to five by seven. And when I press enter, I now have a five by seven frame. And I can move this frame before I set the crop. So I'll move it to encompass the area of the picture that I want. And then I will double click to set that cropped image. I'm going to change the size of the image to eight and a half by 11. And I can do this by going into bitmaps and resample and change this to eight and a half by 11. And it's going to be slightly less wide, but that's fine. 
I'll click OK and now I have my image roughly eight and a half by 11. With the image selected, now I'm going to go to bitmaps and blur and radial blur. And you can adjust the amount of blur with the slider. This is enough blur for me and then click OK. Now to combine those pictures, I'm going to go to file, import, and I'll navigate to my desktop mixed media folder and import the lady with the guitar and press enter. I need to resize her and to do that I'll go to bitmaps and resample and I want the height about six inches and when I press enter the height will be changed and then I can move her around and place her on this background image exactly where I want her. Now let's do file export and let me make sure that I have nothing selected. And I'm going to export this as a combination image. I'll again save it as a PNG, click on export, and then click OK. Then I can select File and Close. And I don't need to save the changes as an art file because I've already exported the picture. This will reopen in Embroidery Canvas and I'll select New Blank Design and then go back to Artwork Canvas. And I'll select File, Import, and again navigate to the location of the saved design. and I want to open sheet music. I'll select import and press enter. I'll go to bitmaps, resample, and this I want to have the width of this image 8.5 and I'll press enter. Now remember you can use the resizing handles to resize a picture but when you do that versus going to bitmaps and resample you will be changing the resolution of an image that's why it's best to go into resample select bitmaps and camera and photo filter and here you can choose the color that you want to use. The default color is not this blue, but you can click on the drop down arrow and then you move the slider to the hue that you want. And once you find that hue, you can move the square wherever you want it to lighten the image. I'm going to reset this to show you what the default color is. And to get the blue, I first used the slider and brought it up to the light blue area. And then move this square to lessen the intensity. And I can also choose the eyedropper. And I want to move this to kind of the light blue area. And when you get something you like, just go OK. Now another thing that we're going to do is make this a little bit more blurry. And to do that, I'm going to go to Bitmaps and Custom and select Alchemy. And this is going to make the print less distinct. I just used the default settings on mine and clicked OK. One last adjustment, go to Bitmaps Image Adjustment Lab, and you can change the brightness to lighten the image. We're going to put some lettering on this, so we don't want the focus to be on the image, but instead on the lettering. And when I click OK, that image is now adjusted.
One other thing that we can do is curl the page, and that's kind of fun to do on some of your images. So in this case, we'll go to Bitmap's 3D effect and page curl. And here we can play around with both the vertical and the horizontal dimensions. I changed the width to 20% and the height to 45. And you can see that it remembered my settings, so I'm just gonna go okay and you can see that the page is curled. That's up to you if you wanna do that or not. Once you prepare this image, you'll go back to File Export and navigate to your Mixed Media folder, and you can call this Sheet Music. It is not necessary to save this as a PNG because we're not dealing with transparency, so I'm gonna save this as a JPEG and I'll click on export and then click on OK. Next, go ahead and switch to Embroidery Canvas and right click on the lettering icon and type in the phrase. We can't always choose. Press Enter the music life plays for us press enter but we can choose how we dance to it i use the alice font and I changed the size to 0.5 in my sample, but I would recommend that you change it to 0.45. And click OK, and then click on the screen to activate the lettering. And then you can move it into place. And if you want to preview a color, I used a, an orange color, but you can use whatever color you want and you'll move it around and get it placed where you want. Next, go to the Open Object tool in the Digitize Toolbox, select a contrast color, and you'll click with three left clicks along the left-hand corner and then press Enter. That's going to serve as a placement line. Now, I want to press escape and if you need to reshape of course you can reshape this so that is right on the edge make sure you zoom in so you can be placing this correctly and then press escape select the line and move it to start select file save as and I'll go back to my mixed media folder and call this um, saying and click on save. Now, when this is sent to a USB stick, you'll notice that you're gonna get a message that it's outside the hoop boundaries. So before we leave this file, we're gonna to go to the multi-hooping toolbox, select the hoop, and click on rotate left two times and when we return to the embroidery canvas this now will fit within the oval hoop click on save and then you can go ahead and export this file to your usb stick you can go ahead and close that file and select new blank design and switch to artwork canvas click on insert artwork and navigate to the folder and so select Ballerina Child. Click on Import and then press Enter. Once again, we're going to resize this picture, go to Bitmaps and Resample, and we're going to change the height to 5.5 and press OK. Then select Bitmaps Image Adjustment Lab, and we're going to move the slider. And by the way, if you want let me close this out. If you want to get some idea of the colors, you can go back and insert 
that combination folder that you saved. So let's go back to our desktop mixed media, insert the combination, and then once I press enter and move it out of the way, you can pick up colors that you want to kind of focus on. So I'll reselect the ballerina, go to Bitmaps Image Adjustment Lab, and I'm going to move the temperature kind of down into the orange area because I'm going to pick up some of these orange colors. And I'll adjust the temperature, the slider, if I want to lessen the saturation to kind of make it a little bit less intense, I can do that. And once you get the image set where you want it to be set, click OK. Now let's import another image and we'll go back and you'll navigate to your image folder and select the angel. Click on import, press enter, go to bitmaps and resample. Change this as well to 5.5, press enter and go back to bitmaps image adjustment lab. And this time I want this one tinted blue and I can move the slider. I can increase the intensity by moving the saturation might want this a little bit less turquoise and more blue to pick up some of the colors in the sky. Again, set it. You can always create a snapshot and recolor it in very various ways and then pick the one that you want. I'm going to click OK. And then we have one more image to do, and this is the Bohemian Lady. Click on Import, press Enter. Again, go to bitmaps and resample, and I'm going to change the height to 5.5, press enter, and this one I'm going to do the green tint. So I'm going to go to bitmaps, image adjustment lab, and move this into the green area to pick up some of these colors. You can move the temperature, you can do the tint, if you want to brighten it, you can change the brightness but get it fixed where you are pleased with the image. Click OK, and that now you can see that all your images are tinted. When you're done with this image, go ahead and select it and delete it, and we'll be working now with these images. We are going to power clip these images inside an oval frame. So you'll first want to create your oval by clicking on vector ellipse and then draw the oval on the screen. While it's selected, change the dimensions to three in the width and five in the height and press enter. Then while it's selected, you'll right click and drag and say copy here and then make one more copy by right clicking and making another copy. Select one of the images, and you'll want the pick tool for this. Select one of the images, and then go Object, Power Clip, Place Inside Frame, and click on one of the frames. Now you have some editing tools below the picture. This first one, when I click on it, the image disappears, but when I roll my mouse, the image will reappear. I can select this, and I can move it around so that it is placed where I want it in the frame. When you're after you're done placing it, you will click on the Finish Edit, and now that image is power clip. Now you can see I've got some white space, so I want to go back and I want to re-edit it, and I'll select that and make sure that the image is entirely within the oval. Again, click on Finish Editing. Go to the next picture, go to Object, Power Clip, Place Inside Frame. Again, click on the image. I want to bring it down a little bit. Just remember when you click on that image, it goes away and you have to use your mouse to get it back. Now I can bring that image down and click on Finish Editing. Select the last picture, again, Object, Power Clip, 
place inside frame, click it. If I want to edit that image, I can click on edit, roll the mouse to make the image reappear, and I can also use my arrow keys to fine tune the placement of that image. When I'm done, I'll click on finish editing. Now I want to change my paper size back to eight and a half by 11 because that's the sheet uh, size for the printed treasures. So I'll do that by, I can click on custom and do letter. That's the quick way to change it. And then I want all these images placed inside the paper area. And that way I know that they'll all fit and can be printed at once on my printed treasures paper. Once I get them placed, I'm going to do file export. I'll navigate to my folder on my desktop. And I'm going to call this power clipped images. And I can export this as a JPEG as well. I'll click on export and then click on OK. I can select file close and I don't need to save the changes because I've already exported the images and I'll just click on no. Again, that reopens embroidery canvas and I'll select new blank design. In this design, we're going to create the background for our oval frames. So go to the layout toolbox and select define work area. We want to unlock proportions and then change the height to 19.5 and the width to 7 and click OK. And I'll just get rid of the hoop for right now and this is representing the background for the oval frames. Next I'm going to switch to Artwork Canvas and I'm going to draw an oval. I'll select the vector ellipse and draw an oval. While it's selected, I want to change it to 3 in width and 5 in height, and I can press Enter. And then I'm going to convert this to embroidery. I'm going to change the position to get it right in the center of my layout, and I'll change it to 0 in X and 0 in Y, and that centers the oval. Now we're going to create applique frames. So we're going to select Copy, Paste, and while that copy is selected, I want to change the color, and then I'm going to select Paste again, and I'm going to change the color once more. For this third oval, I'll right click on the pattern run and click on select and there are tons of different patterns that you can choose. I did one in the home deck category but you're free to choose any of these patterns. I'll activate my true view and the pattern that I chose was this 427. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and OK again, and now you can see that that pattern is around the frame. I did one other thing, and with this pattern run selected, I copied it and pasted it and changed it to a satin outline. And to make it slightly outside the pattern, I increased the percent to 101 and pressed Enter. And that just finishes off that pattern a little bit better. It doesn't have to be a contrast color. We also want to make this second oval slightly smaller. And I am going to do this by selecting it in color film and I'll hold down the shift key. And I'm going to turn off stitches and I want my show outlines. That way I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to bring this outline so it is slightly smaller than the 
placement line and that will hold it in place. It will actually catch the picture. And I'm going to hold down the shift key as I do this. That way it will resize from center out. So the idea is it just is barely going to be smaller and it will catch the edge. I can reactivate my show stitches now and I can look, it's still extending a little bit, so I want to make it slightly larger just so it tucks under that decorative stitch. And that looks good. Now I'm also going to change the color of this and just the cover stitch. You need the differences in color for the placement line and the tack down line because you need color stops. So I'm going to select the satin stitch and the pattern. And for this one, I'm going to make it blue because it's going to go around the blue power clip. Now I want to make sure I have everything selected. I'll copy and I'll paste and I'll change the position Y to six and press enter. Deselect, select just the outside oval pattern run and the satin stitch. And this one will, I'll change to an orange. And then I want to paste again. Then while this copy is selected, I'm going to change the position of Y to minus six and press enter. I'll deselect and then reselect just the cover stitch. And I'm going to change this to green. When you activate a hoop, you'll notice that even with the mega hoop, the designs will not fit into one hooping. So this is going to have to be manually split. I'm going to draw a bounding box around these first two hoops and select copy, open a new blank file, and select paste. These two designs will fit in the mega hoop. Select file, save as, and call this frame one. Return to the combination frame and draw a bounding box around the third oval. Select copy, open a blank design, and paste. And this design will actually fit in the large oval hoop. And save this file as frame two. Open a new blank design and switch to Artwork Canvas. Select Text, Insert Character, and in the drop-down font, find the Music Elements. Click and drag on the music element you wish to use, and I use this one, and I actually resized it so that it was about five inches in width. I'm going to change the color of the design and click on Converge. Once this is converted, you can rotate it if you wish and then select File Save As and call this Musical Now let's return to the PowerPoint to see how this project is constructed. You're first going to print the fabric, uh, the printed treasures fabric in your printer. You may want to test it first so you know how the fabric is going to print. Mine works so that the fabric side is placed down in my printer. You'll load a, a piece of printed treasures in the printer and then go into the software and select file import and import the combination photo, and then select File Print. Once the image is printed, remove the backing from the fabric. Then you're going to repeat those same steps for the sheet music file, except you're going to select the image and rotate it 90 degrees before printing. 
This will print with a border around it so you can trim around the border. And then you'll repeat those steps for the power clip images. With these, I did not leave a narrow edge around the image, but I would suggest that you do this because that leaves you a little bit more security in catching the fabric with, with the tack down line. You're going to remove the backing and then press fuse and fix to the wrong side of the ovals. On the fabric for the embroidered frames, draw a vertical center line down the length of the fabric. Now remember, this piece is cut 9 inches by 25 inches. So there's going to be extra fabric included in the top and the bottom and on the sides to make it easier to hoop. You'll measure down 11 inches from the top of the fabric and draw a line across the fabric perpendicular to the center and then draw another line from the top 20 inches down and these were going to be your centering lines for the two different hoopings. Back the fabric with medium weight stabilizer the entire length and width of the fabric and then hoop the upper piece of fabric placing that horizontal center line that you drew with the center of the plastic template for the mega hoop. You'll use move motif then to align the design with the marked center. Then go ahead and embroider the two frame file. Stitch the placement line first. Paper backing should be removed. Place the trimmed photo over the placement line and stitch the tack down line next. Then stitch the cover stitch. Now remember you have applique fuse and fix on the back of these pictures and that will help hold the image in place. Then stitch the cover stitch and repeat the, that process for the second frame. Unhoop the fabric and then align the vertical and horizontal center of the bottom center line in the large oval hoop. Again, you'll use move motif if needed to move to match the design center and stitch the third applique frame. Then hoop stable stick tear away in the large oval hoop. Remove the paper backing if you haven't done so already. Stitch a placement line on the stable stick tear away and align the lower left corner of the printed sheet music with the stitch corner and stitch the lettering. There is your finished sheet music. Then you're going to use the patchwork foot of your choice. I use the 97D on my 880 and you're going to piece the top. You're going to sew the right side of the photo to the longer strip and then true that piece. Sew the right side of the sheet music to the smaller strip and true that and then sew the wider strip to each of these pieces. Then trim the applique frame to size. The applique frame is 7 inches in width and 19 and a half inches in length and you'll leave a 2 inch border on the side of each frame and an inch and a quarter border at the top and bottom. And then piece the top so the combined piece to the applique frame piece and true all the edges. Then your last step is to embroider the musical staff. If you use a template, you'll print out a template and you can mark the desired location of the center of the musical staff file. Hoop stable stick tear away in the hoop and then place the quilt top over the stabilizer aligning the center mark. Another option is to use absolute check. You will use absolute check to check the position of the design and I ended up rotating my design about 23 degrees in the machine. You'll add a basting frame around the design and then stitch the musical staff. You're going to true all the edges and layer the top batting and backing and stitch in the ditch through all layers and then you can add any other quilting you wish and then bind and finish the edges as you desired. As far as the presser feet used, I used the Patchwork Foot 97D for piecing. I used my walking foot to stitch in the ditch and then I used the stitch regulator to stitch around any areas that I want to, to emphasize and this is the cutout picture of the lady in the guitar. 
Then I used the leather roller foot number 55 to do some echo quilting around the picture frames and just some free motion quilting with the leather roller foot to complete the project. And here you see the finished project. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you for lesson 10 next month.